Hello and welcome to Middleware Friday. This is episode 5 for February 3rd, 2017. Today I'm joined with a special guest, Steph Jan Wiggers. He's a longtime friend of mine, an Azure MVP, and today he's going to talk to us about serverless integration. In addition to the content from Steph Jan, we're also going to take a look at some of the recent announcements coming out of the Microsoft Pro integration team in our community corner. More specifically, We'll talk about the BizTalk Server 2016 Cumulative Update Pack 1 and also get an update from the Logic Apps team through their Logic Apps Live segment on YouTube. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Steph Jan. Hi, I'm Stephen Wiggis and I'm going to talk about serverless integration. So to do that, I'm going to run through a run through a scenario, <clears throat> which is depicted here. So I have some components here in um, in Azure I'm going to use. So that's the Logic App, uh, the Cognitive Service API. So I'm going to do the, uh, the text and the analysis for sentiment. I've got a an Azure function, and um, I'm also integrating with Slack. So basically, what happens is that um, as soon as I'm going to turn on my Logic App, it's going to find all the tweets that hash, uh, have the hashtag Trump in them. And they will be picked up and they will scale out. So it's going to be in parallel. And those uh, tweet texts are going to be sent to a Cognitive Service API and they're going to do the text analysis, basically going to score um, how the sentiment is in the text. Then that score is going to be sent out to a function to evaluate it. Um, I'm just doing three things. It is either you know good, bad or moderate, depending on a certain range of the score. And then those uh, tweets are being posted to Slack and they're either added up in a, a certain channel that can be good, moderate or bad. So let's switch over to, uh, to the dashboard. So there are a few components in there. So let's just switch over to, um, to the function app. So here's where the scores come in from uh, the cognitive search. So basically it's just a score. So I've got a, a sample right here. So within fu <coughs> functions, you can set them up in a function app. So that's kind of a container where it runs in. Then you can have either consumption or a dedicated price plan, so the app service plan. So uh, if you do consumption, then it's just based on execution. And if you do a um, an app price plan, then it's more based on having a dedicated VM where you can run your uh, your functions in. So it depends if you've got some, some VMs spinned up uh, for your apps, then you can use that kind of... Uh, pricing plan so it depends on your choice but anyways you can just create a function so this is a webhook c sharp um, i'm using this is where the, uh, the request comes in i can test it easily just by running it and it will say hey this is a good score if i just change this to another score and i just run it again it gives a different output you can just see you can build your function right here you don't need any visual studio or anything you can in case of functions and also the logic app with templates but you can just build it right up here in, in your browser it's kind of you know complete service you have your browser and that's it you can build your function right here so this is a component of our solution so if i switch over to the logic app designer so this is the other environment where i put some of the um, the steps in so basically your logic app is a container as well and just runs on a consumption plan and execution of uh, for actions so in this case um, the, the whole concept is around triggers and actions so the trigger in this case is this tweet that comes in and it has you know it's going to filter on the trump hashtag and the frequency is you know every three minutes then it's going to post that tweet text right over to that um, cognitive services uh, api so we chosen to detect sentiment so it's still in preview that will give you a score and that score is being sent to that function which I just showed you, right? And based on, you know, what comes out of that function, it's either, you know, good, moderate or bad. It's that the body is being, that's contained just that word. Um, if it's good, then it will post the message to Slack and then to the good channel. If it's not good, then it could be moderate or bad. But if it's moderate, it's going to post it in the moderate channel or it's going to post it in the bad channel. So, and it's all going to be tweet and tweet text and who's tweeted it. So it's kind of how it, you know, looks like. So we're going to go into, um, to my logic app. I just named the Trump and I, so I've got no political view or anything in, in the United States. I'm from the Netherlands. It's just, you know, uh, the Trump generates a lot of, um, traffic. So if I enable this, right, 
and straight away execute the trigger. Now it's going to process a loss. I'm going to disable it again. And this is going to run. So, you know, in parallel, there's tons and tons of tweets are being picked up and going to be shoot to the um, to the uh, logic app. So you can already see some are being run. You know, you can click on any one of those and it will come up. And this is the beauty of a logic app. So this comes all out of the box. It's all serverless. You can look in the browser. You can see what happens. You can see that the uh, there's a tweet coming right in. Right here, you can see the text. You know, the sentiments being detected. You can see that it's got a certain score. That score is being passed over to the function. The function gives back moderate and then you know it goes into these conditions and in the in the end it's it's posted so you can click this all out you can just follow it through so it's second condition post message two which is moderate right so if I go up to um, my slack dashboard so here I got some some uh, channel set up so you get the moderate here you can see those texts again so based on on how the sentiment is you can you find you know the tweets either in the bad or in the moderate or in the good channel so you know you can kind of use this if you uh, trying to uh, to monitor uh, certain sentiments when you launch for instance a product and then you can say okay i'm gonna you know send them over to whatever type of software so slack is really useful for you know collaboration between each other but you can have you know a team set up and they just review all those all those tweets right so this is kind of what happens so if i go back to you can see it's still running up there are still a few, still uh, some of those tweets being analyzed and hey there's one failing as well and that's going to be interesting i already knew this is going to fail because of you know, the logic app scales out and it just, you know, all being, you know, going to hammer that cognitive service. And what happens is what you right see here, the rate limit is exceeded, try again a nine sync. So there's a certain rate limiting, but that's because of the workload that's being pushed towards that cognitive service. And that cognitive service is um, tied to a pricing plan. So that's kind of it. So the pricing plan is set up. It's, it's kind of a free one I've set up. So it, it, it won't be able to handle all that traffic. So if I go to the... Um, to that cognitive service overview you can see some of the monitoring you see errors happening as well but just have a look at the pricing plan so the pricing plan is set right here and i've chosen the free which is a certain calls um, you know per 30 days so it's quite limited it's free so it's easy if you want to try this out but you know i have to probably scale up to really enable me to process all those requests and workloads so it's currently it's not so if you look at the uh, aspect of the, the general concept of, of logic apps in general it's on the consumption plan in one way but still you know it can scale out easily I've seen it in other projects as well uh, that won't be the problem it's more where the other components in your solution so in this case it's a server can can it handle that workload based on the tier you're selecting so that's kind of you know where they I would say the weak spot is what's well, not really the weak spot but the weakest link <laughs> could be this, you know, is it catered for, or can it help, or can it process all that workload? So logic apps can, uh, functions in a way can that too. It's more the other services you're gonna tie with in your workflow uh, definition within your logic app. So what you can do though, and this is interesting, you can resubmit it. So I just resubmitted this one because that was canceled. So see, and now you can see it is succeeds. Because I waited and now you can, but you don't want to do that, you know, constantly for all those um, things that fail, all those um, logic app runs. So that's not really going to work. Okay. So what you just seen is just an example of, of serverless integration. So I've used a logic app, I've used a function, I tied it to some of the other Azure services. Well, in this case, one that's the Cognitive Service API, and I tied the, uh, the outcome of of what I've done, or at least send those over to another SaaS application, uh, which is Slack. So that means like I've built a totally integration solution, cloud to cloud. You could say I've got tweets on one end, you know, and I'm kind of you know sending uh, that information in the end to Slack to a certain channel. So you've seen a little bit of the uh, the logic app, um, you know, how it's built up. It's just triggers and actions, uh, functions. Um, you know, I recommend you go online and find some of the documentation there, but you can, you, you saw, you can build those things right up there in, uh, 
in Azure, and you see one of the cognitive service capability, and you know, the cognitive service still in, in a preview, it can do vision, speech, and all that such a thing. So in this case, we did some text analysis, and I showed you a little bit of monitoring too in the cognitive service where you can see, hey, you know, the, the amount of traffic that hit it. So, um, okay, well, this was kind of a little bit about, you know, service integration in Azure, and thanks for listening in. Thanks, Steph Jan, for providing that excellent demo. I think it was a great complimentary use case to the previous two episodes of Middleware Friday where we also use cognitive services. In those scenarios, we use the face API instead of the text analysis. But I do think that cognitive services is a game changer um, for the entire industry. Let's now jump into the community content for this week. First up is BizTalk Server 2016 CU1 News. Our good friend Tord had released this on a blog post, the links above. And some of the things that are interesting for me anyways is some of the fixes related to SAP. So we're currently going through BizTalk 2016 upgrade and we want to take advantage of the new NCO support that's part of the SAP adapter. We did run into a few issues and it's nice to see that these issues have been addressed. So thanks Tord and the rest of the engineering team for getting those addressed. Uh, there looks like there's some other fixes related to BAM, tracking, MQ series, HTTP. So if you're using any of those features or adapters, it's worth taking a look. Next up, let's talk about Logic Apps Live. I certainly don't want to steal their thunder, but this was a a great episode as usual by Jeff, Kevin, and John. So as you can see, there's some new features that have been released, including the JSON parse, which is a nice feature. Uh, I've used it before with an HTTP inbound connector, and you can really use this anywhere. So if you're receiving a message off of a service bus queue or topic, now you can actually apply a JSON schema to it, so you'll get some better support when you go to use any of those attributes in downstream connectors. There's additional support for Visual Studio. There was a, a fix release related to parameters. And there's also some news around binding logic apps to alert. So in the event that you have a service degrade, perhaps maybe a web app or a SQL instance, you now can attach a logic app to those alerts and then do some downstream processing. An example they used was PagerDuty, but I know what I'm going to look at is a future episode on Middleware Fridays, how do I actually take one of these Azure alerts and then create a ServiceNow incident, just as we use ServiceNow. Moving over to the new SaaS connectors, uh, there's a variety of new connectors available and some operations that have been updated or included. Uh, more, the one that sticks out for me would probably be the Power BI. Uh, I've had the chance to play with this in a private preview. I'm super pumped to take a further look at this. I'm thinking this is going to be the next episode of Middleware Fridays. We're going to take a look at Power BI and how we can use the real-time streaming data sets and plug Logic Apps directly into them. Lastly, here's some of the items that are in progress. Variables are of interest to me. That's something that I felt I could use previously uh, when building out Logic Apps. And certainly the relative URL is interesting, especially if you start to get into you know RESTful design and you want to model your different logic apps after specific RESTful operations. Historically, that's been a post. It's been more of a one-way street, so I'm excited to see this granularity being exposed. Also, being a resident of Canada, having Canadian region support is of interest to me. Uh, we do run a lot of our stuff in US West because it actually is closer to Calgary than Canadian data centers, but we do have some operations in Eastern Canada, so we want to be able to run some interfaces closer to our user base, then certainly that would be of interest to us. So that concludes the community content segment of this episode. Feedback, keep it coming. Uh, received some really nice feedback this past week. I'm certainly doing what I can to try to address it. Sometimes it could be a request for content or request to get certain people on the show. So it is being monitored, it is being watched. I am doing the best I can to address some of that feedback. Thanks again for watching this episode of Middleware Friday. Also want to call out to BizTalk360 for being a great partner of the show. I also want to thank 
Steph Jan Wiggers for providing the feature content for today. It was very good. Thanks again. Here's a link to Steph Jan's blog and his Twitter handle, so feel free to reach out to him. And lastly, the music credits for this week can be found on the following SoundCloud pages. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.